Hi, I'm Catherine. And I'm Sophia, and we are interns with Wildkind Forestry. There's a hidden danger in our skies. Here in the Northern Hemisphere, it is mainly prominent in the months of June, July, and August. These months bring beach days, road trips, and endless outdoors time. Unfortunately, our favorite summer memories may soon be a thing of the past. In 2020, NASA and NOAA reported that the ozone hole reached a size nearly three times the size of the continental United States, a mind-boggling 24.8 million kilometers. But how did we get here? In the 1960s, scientists began to notice a molecule called chlorofluorocarbons, or CFCs for short, were eating away at the ozone layer, a layer within the Earth's atmosphere that protects us from harmful UV radiation. So, in 1987, all 198 countries in the United Nations ratified the Montreal Protocol, an agreement to phase out the production of numerous ozone-depleting substances, including CFCs. In practice, all countries have phased out nearly 98% of ozone-depleting substances. With the Montreal Protocol came recovery, but scientists predicted our ozone would be more healed than it currently is, 35 years post-protocol. So, why isn't anyone doing anything about this? It appears that many politicians and people have disregarded the ozone hole as a serious issue. Yet, early reports have shown radiation as strong as UVC rays penetrating through our atmosphere, and the effects of such rays have implications for humans, wildlife, and the environment. Unfortunately, UV radiation doesn't just affect the environment, it affects humans as well. That is true. On a hot summer day, all you want to do is sit by the pool and bask in the sun, hoping for a golden tan. But the reality is, exposure to UV rays can cause premature aging of the skin, and signs of sun damage. It can cause the cornea on the front of the eye to become burned or inflamed. Worst of all, damage from UV radiation has been associated with higher risks for skin cancer. One threat to plants and trees is sun scald. Similar to sunburn, UVB radiation damages the leaves of a plant or the bark of a tree. Sun scald manifests itself as discolored and or cracked bark or dried patches on leaves. Once a plant is scalded, there is no way to reverse the damage. When scalded, important DNA is damaged. Photosynthesis decreases or stops. The plant is unable to grow. And may be rendered sterile and unable to reproduce. As if the UV rays haven't done enough damage, they also affect wildlife. Domestic animals are constantly directly exposed to solar radiation and can consequently develop skin lesions, optical tumors, and thermal stress, or even die. We don't want any of that to happen to you or animals, so how can we prevent it? Well, luckily it's pretty simple. If you would like to go out in the sun, make sure you wear a hat that provides shade for your face or sunglasses to protect your eyes. In addition, the most important part is applying sunscreen. If you go into the pool or into the ocean, make sure to reapply sunscreen before lying out in the sun again. This is why thinned forests, where more UV can hit more of each tree, can be very damaging to the trees. Keeping forests intact is an effective way to protect against excessive UV damage. Additionally, some trees may require a shade cloth to protect them from the sun. To protect new plants from receiving too much sun, it can be effective to plant on the north or west side of your building. Lastly, educate others in your community and around the world by sharing information and resources. Urge your politicians to ban and protect against the production of ozone-depleting substances. For more information on how to protect yourself from the UV rays, you can visit the CDC's website as well as wellkind.org. Those are all of our tips for a hot summer day. Thank you for watching and don't forget your sunscreen.